Thank you for joining me for another video from Grow and Give, a modern victory garden project brought to you by CSU Extension. Grow and Give videos will help you learn to grow food, share the harvest, and keep it local. In this video, we're going to learn about berries for the Colorado garden, specifically raspberries and blackberries, also called brambles. The following video is an excerpt from a live webinar on growing small fruits in Colorado. You can find the full webinar on the Grow and Give website. Raspberries are in the uh, rubus species, and so we have lots of different types of rubus out there. We've got red raspberries, black raspberries, and purple raspberries, and then there's also many other subspecies of raspberries. Um, you can get white raspberries, golden raspberries, all kinds. So with raspberries, we have two different types of raspberry canes. We have primocanes, which are one-year-old canes, and then we have floricanes, which are two-year-old canes. So in this picture here, you can see that those primocanes on the left are kind of shorter. They're very straight and erect and upright. Um, they're also going to be thinner in size. They might be a little bigger than maybe a, a pencil or a highlighter in size. When you get to the floricanes, those are usually going to be a little taller. They might be branched. They're going to have some fruit set on them. And then they're going to be thicker, um, almost as thick as, uh, thicker than a Sharpie. I don't know how to say that, like the bigger markers. Um, so there's also two different types of raspberries. So we have summer bearing raspberries and we have fall bearing raspberries. The summer bearing raspberries are actually going to fruit on the floricanes, but the fall bearing types are going to fruit on the primocanes, which means they're going to be first year canes. Um, they're going to set their canes early. As they grow, they're going to start fruiting, and that's it. They're done in one year. So ever bearing red and ever bearing yellow are both fall types. The summer types, those floricane fruiting ones, their primocanes grow up the first year. They go through the winter, dormant, and then in the second year, they start to put on those laterals and they start fruiting on those second year canes. So those types are going to be your summer black, your summer red, and your summer purple. So again, I just want to make sure it's hard with these to, to go from strawberries to raspberries. A lot of terminology here. All right, so let's start with the summer bearing raspberries because those are kind of the more, um, more typical type of raspberries that we'll see. Um, with these in late winter or early spring, you want to go in and you want to remove all of the dead spent floricanes from the year from that previous um, season. And you can do this by cutting those back all the way at the ground. You will be able to tell that they are dead. There won't be any red color to the stem anymore. You can kind of see that in the picture here that they've kind of lost they've lost their look of, of healthiness. So um, go ahead and cut those back to the ground and dispose of those canes because they can often have insects that will bore into the canes and they can also have diseases that you just don't wanna leave um, laying around with your, your growing raspberries. Then you wanna remove the dead, weak, and small canes and start to thin out that, uh, that patch. And then you want to remove the winter killed tips of the canes that you have left. So if a cane is kind of dead on the top, but still okay on the bottom, you can kind of just remove that dead spot. So um, here's a picture just to show you kind of how much they had thinned out this patch um, on these summer fruiting red raspberries. So you can see that they're leaving about one cane for every 18 to 24 inches, um, just trying to, to thin out that patch because it can get pretty thick. Um, here you can see um, how they're kind of pruning back those floor canes the next year. Um, as I mentioned, they'll start that second year, they'll start to grow what are called laterals and they'll kind of arch over and hang down. If those laterals hit the soil, a lot of times they'll tip root into the soil. Um, it's actually kind of uh, interesting. You can take those that have tip rooted and dig them out and just cut them back to a few buds and you can use those as new plants. Um, same thing with blackberries. Um, but what you want to do with these floor canes is you want to prune those laterals back um, to about six to eight inches. You just want to reduce the number of buds that are there so that when you do start to get fruit set, there's more energy for less buds. It's going to give you better, um, better yields. So cut those floor canes back 
on the laterals to six to eight inches. As far as summer bearing cultivars that do well in Colorado, we've got Nova, Killarney, Boyne, Latham, Newburgh, and Titan are all good varieties for here. The fall bearing. So these are different, managed completely differently. So these are actually um, raspberries where the, the first year primocanes, when we get to the end of the season, are going to start producing berries. Um, they're going to start at the top and they're going to fruit their way all the way down the cane. You can see in the picture here, um, this is somewhere in Europe, I think, um, but you can see that this, this plant, this ball bearing raspberry plant is fruiting up and down that stem. They're gonna be a lot smaller typically. Um, you can grow these in containers uh, if you want to, um, but they might sucker a lot, so just keep that in mind. At the end of the season, to give you the best yield, once they're done fruiting and, or flowering and fruiting, you want to go ahead and prune all those canes to the ground in the fall after you harvest. You can actually do this with a lawnmower, although I would, I would be, for me personally, I think my, lawn bla my lawnmower blade may not like it as much, so um, I'd probably just go in with my pruners if your patch isn't too big. But on a large scale production-wise, people will just mow these things over, and they'll get a new crop the next year, because again, it only takes that one year for them to flower and fruit. So fall bearing raspberry types for Colorado, there is a whole list here. Um, I've actually grown some of these back in Kentucky. We grew Ann, which is a yellow fruited kind. Um, it doesn't produce as much fruit, but it's pretty tasty. Uh, we grew some Jacqueline's. Uh, Joan Jay is a nice one that is nearly thornless. And so um, if you've got kids, you might want to consider that, uh, that variety. Heritage, I've grown those before, um, but yeah, there's just so many that, of the fall bearing types that do well here. And they're probably a little easier um, for the beginning raspberry grower. As far as raspberry culture goes, uh, you want to start with good growing conditions because this patch that you're going to create can last up to 15 years. You want to make sure you plant it in an area with at least eight hours of full sun. And a windbreak is a pretty good idea, especially around uh, this northern Front Range area. It gets so windy. Um, that can just really help out uh, with your plants being happy. Make sure your soil is well drained. Uh, make sure it has good organic matter. These plants really don't like to be planted in poorly drained sites. They, want, they don't want to have their feet wet, but they do want a nice organic soil. Um, don't plant straw, uh, following strawberries, other raspberries, solanaceous crops, vine crops, again for that same reason. These are in the rose family too, and so if you do have any of those soil-borne diseases, um, it can affect your raspberries as well. Irrigation. So with raspberries, they really prefer a light but frequent watering. They're going to need about one to three inches of water per week when the fruits are being formed. Um, drip irrigation is really the best thing for, um, for any of these fruits, but for the raspberries, it's just going to reduce your potential for any diseases. One thing that raspberries are really um, probably going to need is a good trellis system. Um, this is popular for both the summer and the fall bearing type of raspberries, but especially for those fall bearing types, they can get a little uh, tall. Um, they're basically, this system is set up in a T. And so you've got wires about knee height, and that's going to handle your raspberries. Um, it's unlikely that they're going to get to that second post, um, but this, this particular system can also be used for blackberries. And so we'll talk about that in a few slides, but you can see that there's room for them to grow vertically. Um, and then there's that support along the side. Here's another T trellis system. Um, here they've only got the one T. And so you can see just those raspberries really don't grow up too terribly much higher than that, that first wire there. So um, when you're pruning and thinning, again, always make sure you're pruning out those weak canes. If they're smaller than a pencil, um, probably not the strongest. Leave back the ones that are a little bit stronger. And then for those summer bearing types, you want to make sure you're keeping about 10 canes per four foot row. I mentioned it earlier, but raspberries come in all colors, and so you can get gold ones, black ones. Um, there are purple raspberries out there, but they just don't do quite as well here. 
what is the difference between blackberries and raspberries? It's really a pretty subtle difference. Again, they're all in that rubus family. But blackberries, when you pick them, are going to retain the receptacle inside, whereas the raspberries are going to be hollow on the inside. Blackberries generally tend to be a little bit larger in size, um, but that can be variety specific. There are a few blackberry and red raspberry hybrids out there. So you may have heard of some of these. Um, they are generally considered more blackberries because the receptacle does come off with the fruit. So boysenberries, loganberries, and tayberries. Um, you know, these aren't as commonly grown in Colorado. There's just some questions about their hardiness and water needs. So I'm not gonna cover much more about those, but I do wanna focus in a little bit on blackberries. So blackberries are in the uh, genus Rubus, Rubus fruticosus. And there's, just like raspberries and just like strawberries, there's different types of blackberries as well. Um, you want to be selecting here in Colorado either erect blackberries or semi-erect blackberries. There's another category, which are the trailing blackberries, but those are just not hardy in Colorado because they do get killed off when it gets pretty cold. The erect blackberries uh, are gonna have a stiff arching cane. They're gonna be somewhat self-supporting, um, but I still would recommend a trellis with even the erect type of blackberries. Um, these might be killed in the fluctuating springtime weather. They're, they're typically just a little less hardy. Um, they're usually thornly, thorny, excuse me, but there are a few thornless types of erect blackberries out there. Semi-erect blackberries are probably more popular in my opinion. Um, these are typically thornless and um, I should say trellising on the semi-erect is definitely required. So as far as the erect blackberry cultivars for Colorado, Prime Jan and Prime Jim both do well. I will say this, I grew these in Kentucky. These do well across the United States. They're really the two main, in my opinion, the two main types of erect blackberries you, that are being grown in the United States. As far as the semi-erect, Triple Crown and Chester, I also grew these in Kentucky. So again, a wide range of where you can grow these and they're gonna be pretty, uh, pretty reliable here in Colorado. Uh, Triple Crown have massive berries, um, probably almost the size of a ping pong ball if they're really, really happy, which is just crazy. Really good. And again, thornless. Um, the, both, I think, I don't know about the Chester, but the Triple Crown is definitely a thornless cultivar. All right, planting blackberries. So think back to the um, summer bearing raspberries, how they grow up in the first year and then the second year they're gonna set those floor canes. These grow in a really similar fashion. They're just kind of on a bigger scale. So with the erect cultivars of blackberries, the spacing, you're gonna need about two to three feet between plants. Whereas the semi-erect, you're gonna need five to six feet between plants because they just take up a lot, again, a lot of space. Um, a trellis system is definitely recommended for the semi-erect. Um, so yeah, cultural needs are gonna be similar to raspberries in terms of fertilizers, um, irrigation, and planting. Here you can see a blackberry trellis. Um, I think a second level of, of wire would, would definitely be helpful in this case, um, but you wanna use that two wire system with one wire at 18 inches above the first wire. So if you put one, say between knee and waist high, then put another one about a foot and a half higher. We have a garden note on this, um, on pruning and everything, it's 762, and I'll show these again at the end of the, the talk. So with pruning, as I mentioned, it's very similar to that um, summer, uh, summer bearing raspberry, where you're gonna have those canes with laterals on them. And so you wanna cut those laterals back um, in the early spring, late winter, and you're gonna be cutting with blackberries, again, they're on a larger scale. So instead of six to eight inch laterals, you wanna probably have about, oh, maybe 12 inch laterals. And I don't know if you can see my cursor, but this is what I'm referring to when I'm referring to a lateral in the upper picture, in the picture here on the upper corner. CSU Extension has some great resources to help you grow small fruits in Colorado. Be sure to check out our Master Gardener webpage. There you'll find lots of information about many different types of small fruits all in one place. 
Also look for our Plant Talk articles. These are short and to the point. We also offer CSU Extension fact sheets, which are gonna give you just a little bit more information. And if you really wanna take a deep dive into growing small fruits, check out our Master Gardener Garden Notes. Thank you for joining me for this video. If you have more questions, contact your local CSU Extension office or check out our website at extension.colostate.edu.